In this experiment, you will prepare your own galvanic cells and take readings of the cell potential. You will use this data in the Nernst equation to calculate the voltage produced by the chemical cells you study. Redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one chemical species to another. If a species gains electrons, it is said to have been reduced. If it loses electrons, it is said to have been oxidized. One example of this type of reaction is an iron nail placed in a solution of copper two ions. In this reaction, two electrons are removed from the iron, releasing it into the solution as iron two plus ions. These electrons are transferred to a copper ion, reducing it to a copper solid. That is why copper solid will build up around the iron nail if this experiment is performed. The overall reaction can be split into two half reactions shown on the slide. These show iron atoms losing two electrons to become the iron two plus ion and copper ions gaining electrons and becoming a solid. If these two reactions are combined, the electrons on either side of the reaction are redundant, so they are not shown. Produce the overall reaction shown with only the solid and aqueous chemical species. Copper is being reduced, but it is also causing the iron to oxide. Therefore, it can be referred to as the oxidizing agent. Similarly, iron is being oxidized, but is causing the copper to be reduced, so it can be called the reducing agent. In lab, we are able to physically separate the two half reactions of the cell. The two reactions can be connected with a salt bridge which allows the migration of ions from one solution to another, and a wire, which will be in the form of a voltmeter, to measure the electron flow between the anode and the cathode. Electrons will flow spontaneously from the anode, where oxidation occurs, releasing electrons to the cathode, where ions are reduced, forming a solid. This creates electrical potential, which is measured in volts. There's a diagram of this apparatus and process on page 16.2 of your lab manual. What you prepare in this lab is a galvanic cell, or voltaic cell. These cells use spontaneous oxidation reduction reactions to generate electricity. Just like any other chemical reaction, oxidation reduction reactions have to be balanced. This means that there must be an equal number of electrons released by one species and gained by another. The voltage caused by the reaction tells us about the power of the driving force of the reaction. Each half cell produces its own potential, which is measured relative to a reference cell. The reference used is the standard hydrogen electrode which has a defined potential of zero volts. When looking at the potential for a cell, the reaction occurring in that cell is written as a reduction. When the voltages for the two half cells are compared, the one with the highest voltage is defined as the cathode, where reduction occurs. This is shown in red as the reaction of copper two ions to become neutral, solid copper. The reaction with the lowest voltage is defined as the anode, where oxidation occurs. This is the reaction of iron, shown in blue. Of two chemical species, one will have a greater ability to lose electrons, becoming oxidized. This compound is a stronger reducing agent and will cause the other species to be reduced. In turn, the other species will be a stronger oxidizing agent with a better ability to gain electrons and become reduced, causing the first species to become oxidized. The terms oxidation and reduction and oxidizing and reducing agents and what they mean in terms of electron movement are easy to get confused. Here are a few acronyms 
that might help to remember what is going on in each case. The potential of a galvanic cell can be determined in two ways. First, by the sum of the potential of the reduction and oxidation half reactions. Both of these should be positive values. Second, the difference of the reduction potentials of the cathode and anode can be used. These are the voltages produced when both reactions are written as reductions. In this case, the value for the reduction is positive and the value for the oxidation is negative. For the first method, the magnitude of the voltage for the oxidation reaction has to have its sign changed, as the reaction is proceeding in the opposite direction. For the second method, subtracting a negative number from a positive one produces the same result. If you are looking at the same two chemical species, the result of the calculation should be the same, no matter which method of calculation you use. Here is a diagram of a voltaic cell. Notice that the voltage measured is the total potential of the cell, as we calculated on the previous slide. The two cells are separated in beakers with a salt bridge connecting the two to allow ions to migrate. This is a similar apparatus to what you will be using in your experiment. Here is a close-up of the anode and cathode in their respective solutions. As you can see, the reduction of copper ions produces electrons, which travel up the wire connected to the cathode. These travel all the way to the anode, where they oxidize the iron, forming an iron ion. This flow of electrons is what creates the voltage you will measure. The next equation is used to calculate the potential for an entire electrochemical cell, or a half cell. The non-standard potential is what is measured during an experiment. It can also be calculated from the standard potentials of the half cells involved, as seen on the previous slide. E0 is the standard cell potential. Q is similar to equilibrium constant, except it is used to describe systems which are not at equilibrium. It is defined as the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. N is the number of electrons that change during the reaction. Going back to our iron-copper oxidation reduction reaction, given the concentration of ions, we are able to use the Nernst equation to calculate non-standard potential. Q is equal to the concentration of iron ions divided by the concentration of copper ions. We put the concentration values equation and take the log to get a value of negative 0.398 for this term. Because in the balanced equation, two electrons are exchanged, n is equal to 2. The standard cell potential we calculated from the standard potentials of the two half cells on the previous slide. We can put this value of 0 0.777 into the equation to solve for the potential of the cell. Inputting all these values into the equation gives us a potential of 0 0.789 volts for the cell at non-standard state conditions. Notice that this is higher than the cell potential at standard state. Here are a couple of important things to remember when in the lab. The wells you use for your experiment need to be clean and dry. Water or contaminants could affect the concentration of ions in your solutions, which would have a negative effect on your results. The electrode you use also needs to be scrubbed with steel wool or a scrub pad and dried to remove any oxidized material that could get in the way of your experiment. 
For this experiment, you will be using a dish with wells to hold your different half-cell solutions. These need to be arranged exactly as shown on the slide. It is also shown on page 167 of your lab manual. The potassium nitrate in the central well will act as your salt bridge, which will be connected to the other solutions using filter paper. Measure the voltages between the species shown with a voltmeter as soon as the filter paper is completely wet. A positive reading indicates a spontaneous reaction. If a reading is negative, switch the connections of the wires to the voltmeter. You will also prepare three diluted copper solutions to measure the effect of concentration on the voltage. Arrange the wells as shown on the slide, or page 169 of your lab manual, and measure the different potentials between the zinc cell and the four different concentrations of copper. In Part A, the potentials you measure are concentrations of 1.0 molar. Thinking of the Nernst equation, this means that the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential. Using these values, you can calculate the non-standard potentials for the diluted copper solutions in Part B, given that you know the concentrations of all the solutions you used. Compare the values you calculate to the ones you measure over the course of the experiment. The solution you use in this experiment do not go down the drain. Make sure you put them into the appropriate waste container in the fume hood. Electrodes will be reused, so please wash them and return them when you are finished.